Backroads is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money by the vote of the people November 4th, 2008. Then regretted it was gone Cause you thought it contained some meaning Or some answers to a life That you'd never bother to question Or even take a good close look at And it broke your heart to see How it had been so important From the feeling of the steering wheel To the rubber on the road Now it's grown to unrealistic proportions In your mind My name is Charlie Parr. I write songs in a tradition of folk music that probably started happening around the turn of the last century. I've liked music all my life and I've liked a lot of different kinds of music. But the kind of music that I wanted to play was very specific. At the point that this music was initially recorded, you know, genres didn't make sense. They didn't really exist. You know, these, these folks would have called themselves musicianers, you know, solo guitar players could play a lot of different things, played with their fingers usually. That's what inspired me to play. But I'm also inspired and influenced by a lot of different kinds of music. <clears throat> It was hot, 
and it had been raining. Humid at 2 a.m. The streets were wet and the grass was soaking. I had no dry place to lay my head. when I was young, music played whenever my dad was home. And so we had this massive console stereo. And the records, it was, it was a shambolic record collection. I mean, it was just a mess of whatever. And he didn't know half the records that he had. He didn't really understand how he got them. He just had them, and there they were. So he'd grab a stack. And then in those days, you know, the record player had this, the big spindle and the, and the thing that came over, and he'd put a stack of records on this thing, and it would just play through. They'd drop, you know, when the record came, the automatic changer would drop the next one. And so records would just play all the time. And it was both background music to our lives, and it was also like I, as a six, five, six-year-old person, was paying attention to it because my little 
area that I played in was in front of those big tower speakers that we had. And certain records just jumped out at me. And if they jumped out at me hard enough, I would go running over because the covers were all destroyed because of me being, you know, a little kid. I found that if I split the record cover open, then I would have this big, expansive area to, to draw pictures of dinosaurs on, so which is what I did. And my dad wasn't a precious person. He liked the records. He didn't really care what the cover looked like. He would take the stack of records off the turntable and either flip them over and put them back on or he'd just like throw them back on the pile. So if I really liked something, I'd run over and like look at it while it was going around, try to see who it was. I just listened, you know, whether anybody else was listening or not. And I don't, I don't remember talking about it too much with, with anybody until at one point when I was almost eight years old, I said, I, I want to play like that. I want to play something. I couldn't imagine what it was that Man Swipscomb must be doing to be able to play like that, but I wanted to try it. And Dad got me a guitar, and I sat in front of the speakers. Instead of with toys, I sat there with a guitar and retuning it until it sounded kind of like the speakers sounded. And then I'd try to play along, and I'm sure it was terrible. And that's, that's what I still do.
lit by neon cross. Steeple in the distance that was lit by neon cross. Now, when you get to the door, for mercy's sake, you'll find it to be lost. record was written in the very first months of the lockdown. Once lockdown started, I was off the road. I hadn't been off the road in years, so suddenly I was just practicing and reading and starting to write. When you're on the road a lot, you know, you don't have to think much about, you know, existential problems like I'm getting older, what am I going to do? You don't think about that stuff. Suddenly you stop and you're like, oh God, you know, what am I going to do? Conversations with my mother about that, and which were very helpful because she said, well, you, you can't let yourself think that way. You know, life is just this way. She likened it to, you know, drifting along in a river in a boat and, and at one minute you're facing the future that's kind of fuzzy and the next minute you're facing the past, which may or may not exist. And so the whole record has got to do with, in one sense or another, just arriving at a place in life where I am that this kind of point of view is constantly kind of revolving around and what it does is it makes me think a lot more about the present moment than I've ever had in my life. The present moment is, is, is paramount now and it didn't feel like it was before even though it should have been, you know, everybody says, you know, live in the moment but I haven't done that very well. Creating an environment where I can just exist right now feels really good to me and that's kind of what the record's about. And the new record is, is called The Last of the Better Days Ahead, which is definitely the very best title I've ever come up with for anything that I've ever done in my life. And was that a phrase your mom said? No, no, that's something that just came out of my big stupid head, man. I just made that up. <laughs> the lake in my little boat surface of glass I am bound for a notch in the trees rotten wooden steps it's difficult to see in the waning light Northland's October evening Concentrate on the little pool of water that travels from bow to stern. I have a small outboard lent to me by my uncle need of slight repair feels like it's taking forever to reach the farthest shore when I see a scrap of neon floating like a balloon caught in the trees concentrate on the darkening tree line Concentrate on the sinking dock for the voice of my father amongst the pines there's a 
a bar at the top of the staircase Hidden in the leaves Concentrate on the face of my father Concentrate on the last shirt I saw him wear fishing boat at the dock mostly sunk into the mud the steps are all but gone now rotten to my tread I cling to branches to keep from slipping coming up in the 1970s. I had those few records in my dad's collection and no way to figure out what else was out there. Go to the library, well, the library in Austin, Minnesota, where I grew up, had an amazing record collection on the second floor and a lot of Smithsonian records. The Harry Smith Anthology was up there, a lot of records. And I would go to the library and check out records and find those kind of currents and pathways that way. We have YouTube now, which is amazing because in the 70s when I was growing up, you know, I, I was trying to imagine what it looked like to see Man Slipscomb play the guitar. Well, there's films of him playing the guitar. I didn't know that. Nobody told me that. There was no way that I could have seen those films until YouTube, when you can, like, call it up and I can watch Man Slipscomb play and realize that I've been doing it wrong all along. But now I can't change it because I'm 54 years old, so I'm just going to do it the way I do it. But I think that technology is adding to folk music. Young musicians, whether they consider themselves folk musicians or not, you know, who are taking uh, ancient sounds and bringing them forward and adding things that they can add because of technology, they're folk musicians. And they're churning out a music that we haven't heard before because of technology. And we have access to it that's unprecedented because of technology and well, you know, it's music. It's, it's, it's eternal, it's free, it's supposed to be for all of us.
as a jaybird. Backroads is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money by the vote of the people November 4th, 2008.